Okay, so heading into St. Louis, uh, we barely got our engine back from CPR Racing. Um, I don't know if you guys were following me on Instagram or not, but we had some engine problems after Atlanta when I went up to do a demo up in Spokane, Washington. Um, we lost oil pressure and uh, spun a couple bearings and uh, had to get the motor pretty much rebuilt. So um, got that done just barely in time, got the motor back, got it in the car, and our dyno session uh, was uh, basically the Saturday that we should have been leaving for St. Louis. So we got through the dyno on Saturday, no major issues. Um, we put down, uh, I believe, 660 horsepower and uh, 725-ish torque on the in-ground dyno, which is uh, lower numbers than we got from our last dyno session specifically because uh, it's an in-ground dyno and it's not a uh, hub dyno like the dyno packs are. So um, everything went good there. We get out to Willow Springs on Sunday to do some testing and um, the car did good. It got hot uh, towards the end. I wasn't sure why and um, I really was didn't have enough tires to do any more testing so um, I just packed it up and took off to St. Louis. Um, upon arriving in St. Louis, um, the, uh, the car was basically just overheating at idle, um, so that was pretty concerning. Um, so I started looking around the car, seeing what the heck could be wrong, and I noticed that the radiator was pretty much room temperature and the engine was uh, 230 degrees. So at that point I figured the either we had some flow problems or the water pump was bad. Um, I took off the hoses um, and uh, sort of uh, ran hose water through everything to make sure we didn't have any blockage. So um, there was no blockage, so we picked up a new water pump, threw it on the car, same things happening. Um, so at this point we were pretty sure we had some giant massive air bubble in there somewhere which I've never had before. Um, normally I do a vacuum bleed on this car where we pull vacuum onto the cooling system and uh, we don't have any issues bleeding. I haven't had any issues with the cooling system in four years and all of a sudden with this new engine we have uh, issues. Um, so we just kept bleeding it every which way we could. We vacuum bled it. We bled it with the, with the funnel that sits above the, uh, the expansion tank. Um, we cracked pretty much every fitting on the car and ran it and let air sort of work its way out of the system. Um, we were about to give up. We were actually going around uh, asking, I had to ask the judges and the, uh, the uh, organizers at Formula Drift to sort of figure out what constitutes a qualifying run because we do get a single point for just leaving the line uh, during qualifying. So. We were kind of out to get that point, you know, just in case. And um, so that was our plan at that point. We just kept bleeding it to try and figure it out. And finally, lo and behold, it, it held temperature. It was sitting at about a buck 80, and um, the fans were working. Everything just seemed, seemed to be working properly. So we went out and uh, got a couple practice laps in. Um, my practice laps were terrible, to say the least. Um, the car was way too gripped up for that course, and we did not have much time to make any changes uh, in between uh, runs because we had maybe 30 minutes of practice left, and that was our last practice session. So, um, just didn't even, I don't even think I completed a full lap during, during our five practice laps or whatever. It was just too much grip. I wasn't feeling the course um, and uh, just, just wasn't feeling comfortable. Um, so uh, we go out to qualifying. Um, first lap was pretty mediocre, I want to say. I think I missed my outside zone pretty good and I was doing a lot of lifting where I shouldn't have and just not sort of fluidly flowing through the course. Um, second run was better, still not what I would say would be, you know, my greatest work, but um, it was just barely enough to sneak us into that 16th spot, and we, uh, we barely made it into the top 16, which was a big relief considering all the stuff we were going through and uh, the fact that, you know, when I, when I drive bad, I got a lot to hold over my shoulders. There's a lot of people out there helping me, and uh, I don't want to let them down. So, um, so we barely snuck in there, and um, yeah, it was pretty good. 
Um, Friday we show up, we get about two practice laps in, um, there was some steady rain going on, and then all of a sudden shit hit the fan. And when I mean shit hit the fan, I mean quite literally. Well, there were 60 mile per hour winds, it was it was just nuts. I'm going to show you this video that uh, my buddy John Jack Cerrone got out there um, of the Nitto uh, display tent being destroyed and it throwing a 60 pound sandbag about 100 feet plus into the air. Um, it was nuts. Uh, all the live stream equipment, all of Formula D's communications equipment were all wrecked. Um, they had no way to do the live stream, no way to communicate with their guys out on track, and uh, they called the day. They said, you know what, um, we possibly could run the event, but they didn't have all their uh, communication stuff in place, so they decided to just uh, schedule it for the next day. So Saturday night I actually got some pretty decent sleep. Uh, my buddy Curtis was snoring his ass off on the previous nights and we switched beds around so that I didn't have to deal with his snoring all night. Got some good sleep, woke up feeling good, um, went to the track, we got about 30 minutes of practice in, started feeling a lot more comfortable with the car and with the layout of the track, um, and uh, went into top 16 with our first battle with Riley Sexsmith. All right, so first battle with Riley, I was in the follow position. Felt like I had a pretty good line going through the first two clips. A um, little off the clips, and I probably should have been a little bit closer to Riley, but uh, found a way to close the door. He kind of made a small mistake going into uh, the outer zone one, and uh, I tried to capitalize on that by sort of cutting the inside line, and uh, ended up pretty close to the finish there. Middle line there, Ryan for Sexsmith. Haley tries to compromise by taking a shallower line as well, but does not catch up to him. Uh, Ryan, uh, quite a quite a departure here. Well, you can see the early, the initiation early right there by Riley Sexsmith. Now this is where he starts to pull a big gap here. Now he's running a mid line here through the power alley, and that's actually you know one of the preferred lines from the judges. But they do give you some flexibility there. You can see the separation, a little bit of a mistake on that inside clip by Andy Haley. Haley starting to close the door towards this outside zone by taking a tighter line, which. You definitely probably want to do strategically, but it will come at a cost. Coming into the second lap, uh, I threw a huge gap on him going uh, down the straightaway. Um, I believe his car was popping out of fourth gear, so I think when he threw it into fourth, it kind of just popped out on him. And uh, unfortunately, that, that gave me a big gap heading into the first corner and hit my first two flips really well. Carry that um, through uh, into the third clip and uh, hit my outer zone um, pretty good, um, about two or three feet off of the, uh, the edge of the pavement throughout the whole way through. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty good run, giving us a one more time and uh, extending our battle. So Ryan, Andy, and Brian are three judges. Ryan says one more time. Andy says Riley Sexsmith, and Brian says... One more time, so they're going at it again. So this is a one more time battle. So second battle, um, or, sec or our first one more time with Riley, I should say. Um, I was feeling a lot more comfortable with the course at this point. You know, I was feeling the flow. I was feeling feeling good. Um, so uh, we took off, and I stayed with him pretty good until the first clip. Uh, stuck with him good past the second clip and uh, maintained a lot better proximity um, coming into the third clip and uh, lost a little bit of proximity as we go into uh, outer zone two but just gained it right back and uh, stayed with him the whole time kind of fell into the smoke line at the end of the, uh, the course there but did a pretty good job holding our own overall proximity. Let's see how Sexsmith does out front. He overshoots that first inside clip by a little bit. Now coming through that second section there, you can see he's a little bit wide on that second inside clip as well. And Haley was tucking through that smoke line to try to gain proximity. Here you see a little bit of separation and then Haley closes the door back up. Sexsmith 
right on that third hash mark. A little bit of angle reduction there from Mahili towards that final turn through the finish line there. So this run I decided to kind of go full force and attack this course. Uh, nailed the first clip very well, nailed the second clip very well. Carried some really good momentum through into the uh, touch and go and into the third clip. Really good momentum into the outer zone and really filled my outer zone this time. I mean, tire right on the edge of disaster right there and uh, still was able to bring it back with the inside clip and uh, sort of looked back after the battle and I was like, where the heck is Riley? And uh, he was way back there. He got kind of lost in the smoke in the final corner and kind of shut it down a little bit. Um, but uh, it was enough to, uh, to give us the win. I don't think either of us did some, anything in, uh, extremely impressive. I just think my lead was a bit better and uh, uh, my chase was also a bit better. Um, mainly due to Riley's uh, fourth gear popping out, but uh, I mean, that's that's the way it goes sometimes. So I got the win and moved on to our top eight battle with Dylan Hughes. Number one quality. Oh, look at this. Ryan says Andy Haley. Andy says Andy Haley. And Brian says Andy Haley gets the win. Haley gets the win, taking down our number one qualifier. And uh, I completely agree. So it's the first time I've driven with Dylan. Really solid dude. Really good driver. Um, felt like I was able to stay close to him um, without major, you know, problems. Without having to stretch my lines or cut my lines or anything like that. Um, Stayed with him pretty good throughout the entire course. I didn't really close the door anywhere, but I didn't, you know, open the door either. Um, the last corner, I kind of cut the line a little bit to try and gain some proximity, and that kind of, it was a give and take situation. I feel like uh, I lost, you know, some ground at the end of the course because I cut the line, but I also gained some ground too. So um, I think it was a good, good move in the end because uh, there was no real place where, uh, where uh, Dylan closed the door, so um, I feel like it was a good move on my part. This one, uh, again, I'm just feeling pretty comfortable with the course. Initiate um, a little wide on the first clip, nice and tight on the second clip, carrying in a lot of good momentum and speed through this section, a uh, good angle going into that third clip and really swung the outer zone perhaps a little too far. We dropped a tire off for a second, but it didn't slow us down much and just sort of brought it back on the track and nailed that last clip. Dylan was uh, nice and close there behind me, but he had that major mistake going into, uh, into the outer zone. Um, where he cut the line and, and almost straightened out. So I believe that's why they awarded us the one more time was because of that major mistake right there. So yeah, one more time battle. Not going down without a fight. Down, but then he gets back on course here. And then Hughes right here, a little bit of reduction of angle before that final turn. So a bit of a back and forth battle here as both competitors have a couple mistakes. Here's Haley going two tires off. Here as both competitors have a couple mistakes. Here's Haley going two tires off. So second one more time battle, um, I really wish I would have pushed a little bit further in this battle. Um, the rear end of the car was already kind of acting weird, one of our adjusters came loose and uh, the trailing arm was pretty much uh, broken at this point, um, but uh, I didn't quite know it yet, I just knew that something was going on with the rear of the car. I was getting wheel hop out there and uh, the car was just acting funny. Um, come to figure out later one of the main tubes for the trailing arm had uh, 
pretty much broken the whole way through, so only one of the connection points uh, to the trailing arm was kind of holding everything together. So I was getting, you know, camber and toe and uh, and and all that was just sort of adjusting as the car is sliding around, and depending on how much weight's on it, depending on which way you're sliding, the toe would just move and the camber would just move to wherever the load kind of wanted it to move. Um, so uh, the first battle, um, we did pretty good considering the, the arm was broken, or I should say the first lap we did pretty good on our follow. Um, felt like I was pretty close, um, still wish I would have pushed a little bit harder on this one to uh, to really show that um, that I was you know beating him. Kept my proximity very well throughout the entire course. Um, closed the door a little bit more on the outside sweeper, and also kind of took note that uh, when Dylan comes off the outer zone, he all of a sudden throws a really big angle and brings that into inside clip. And I really didn't know he was going to do that on the previous laps. But this lap, this this lap, I did. So I followed accordingly and kind of tucked in behind him and threw big angle kind of at the same time so that, uh, so that we stayed, you know, uniform throughout the course and, uh, good times, good laps. Just wish, uh, the control arm wasn't broken. But my lead lap, um, I initiated and the car just went super wide as if I had, you know, zero grip on that side of the car. And, um, uh, the, you know, I want to say it's a trailing arm. It could have been my mistake. It could have been a combination of both, you know, my mistake and the trailing arm being bad. But uh, we went, you know, a full car length or so wide on that first clip and just completely botched that run. Sort of wound it up and got it together by the second clip. Um, but again, the car, when I was at full throttle, the car was just getting crazy wheel hop and it did not feel safe. Um, so uh, kind of slowed it down towards the end of the track and didn't really go 100% full throttle just because I was afraid that uh, something was about to break, and it was. Um, we got pretty lucky that the uh, the wheel didn't just, or the trailing arm didn't just break completely and suck the tire into the car, and that could have either sent me onto my roof. <laughs> sent the tire back into Dylan's car or I mean there's a multitude of bad things that, that could have happened if that trailing arm did fully break um, but luckily it didn't um, unfortunately Dylan got the win right there um, almost positive that it was that huge mistake at the first inside clip that kind of sealed the deal um, and uh, you know I was you know uh, upset with the fact that you know we lost because of that mechanical failure but I was also really happy that we were able to make it so far when the day before we were literally walking around trying to figure out how to get that single point for just leaving the line during qualifying and we went from there at that point all the way up to you know making it to top eight and uh, actually moving from sixth to fifth in the overall standing so um, really happy about the outcome uh, either way great track um, super fun track I really wish we we uh, I really hope that we end up going there again um, it's definitely my style of track I love road courses I love driving really fast and uh, I like courses that um, that have a decent flow to them and the flow at this place is just awesome it's just it, it's great you're just full throttle if you do it right you're full throttle the almost the entirety of the track and uh, it's just a really really fun place to drive um, and I hope we go back again I guess that's that um, off to the alignment shop tomorrow to try and get the uh, the trailing arms kind of aligned at least evenly so I can make a jig off of them and uh, start building these trailing arms and get a new set on the car so that we can drive in Texas. Uh, other than that, just sorting through other little small issues on the car. The uh, valve cover breather system was leaking quite a bit of oil. Um, yeah, just figuring stuff out. Um, so. I will see you guys next time. I'm going to try and do uh, sort of an in-between vlog here uh, before Texas, but uh, I've just been 
really freaking busy the past couple weeks and uh, didn't sort of put, or I guess I sort of put filming on the back burner um, while I just had other stuff to do. I had a lot to do, you know, around my house while the engine was uh, getting rebuilt and there just, there just wasn't a lot of content going on. I wasn't doing a whole lot of cool stuff, so. I don't want to bore you guys with mundane stuff about my life. I want to bring you guys the cool stuff. So um, I'll be doing more of that. So speaking of cool stuff, uh, some of you may have seen that my car is going to be featured in Forza 7 and Forza Horizon 4 when it comes out in the uh, form of the Drift Car Pack. So be sure to grab Forza 7 and grab Horizon 4 when it comes out so you can drive my car. Um, it's very cool. I've uh, been playing, you know, get, driving games since Gran Turismo 2 on PlayStation 1 way back in the day. So um, I run pretty deep with the sort of driving simulator, and I really do believe that it teaches you a lot of the skills that you need to have out there on the track. Um, so uh, it's it's kind of a dream that I never had come true, I guess you would put it that way. Um, I'd always thought about it in the back of my head about, you know, having the car in a game or something like that, but never in a million years did I think that would come through. I never thought that uh, that car or me was that special at all. So, um, yeah, it's just really cool. Um, grab the game, play it. Uh, I'll be online playing a lot uh, leading up until the release. Uh, got my simulator set up, all, all set up for Forza 7. Got an Xbox One a few weeks back. Uh, probably about a month or two back actually so uh yeah find me on there my gamer tag is hately drift just like my instagram and let's go bang some doors together guys i will see you guys next time and thanks for watching